Um, today, I'd like to focus in on, first I'd like to focus in on the questionnaire that I had each of you fill out. So, just to get an idea, um, did I have anybody in the audience who were in the 0 to 25 percent range? All right. Very good. You guys share with us some of your secrets, right? <laughs> so, that range is, um, your stress levels are, you're in very good shape. You're managing your stress somehow. You have very good stress management techniques. Either you're just not taking it on or you're releasing it as soon as it gets there, right? So anybody else in the 26 to 50 range? Okay, very good. You have a moderate amount of stress, not too much, but you're managing it is what it's saying. What about 51 to 75%? And you don't have to be shy. If you fall in that range, it's no judgment. That's why we're here to support you, right? Okay, 76 to 100, anybody in that range? Truly stressed out? Okay, all right, well good. So it seems like the majority of people are in the 26 to 50 range where you're, um, you're low to moderate stress, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, the young ladies over here who are exercising, I'm sure that that helps to release um, some of that stress that you're accumulating as students as you're studying. And then other people, I'm sure you have other um, powerful stress mechanisms or uh, processes to help you treat these stress. You may be asking, stress management and nutrition, what does one thing have to do with the other? And that's what the subject is gonna be about today. I'm gonna to share with you how stress can actually impact nutrition in a very negative way and nutrition can also impact stress in a negative or positive way. So we're gonna venture into talking about those particular things. Um, first of all, for those of you who came in early and were talking about, you know, you're stressed, uh, you have a lot of work to do, and things of that nature, would anybody like to share at this point, what are some of your key stressors that you're dealing with right now? Would anybody like to share? Work. Finals, okay. Work, family life, family life. Okay, relationships are usually a big stressor for most of us. Teenagers, relationships, <laughs> right? <laughs> my mom. Exactly. Not teenagers. Before my mother, nine years old, dealing with her issues in her household, you know, paying her bills and then responsible for my household. So, right, and working. Finance. Finance is usually a big one for most of us. Um, either not managing it the way we need to or just not having enough of it to manage in the first place. So you've identified some of the things that are stressful for you. How are you currently managing those things? Sleep. Praying. Okay. Prayer. Okay. Anybody else? I mean, we call it son. Teenager, so kind of understanding that okay. he's not, you know, he's not going to be an adult because he's not. So right. just kind of accepting him for who he is, exactly, in his stage in life. Right, and that's the thing about stress. It's not that we're not going to encounter stress. It's how we respond to stress that makes the difference, right? So knowing that you can have a different type of relationship with your son, knowing that he's going to be who he is. Therefore, you accept that as opposed to trying to mold him into something that he's not, right. which is just going to create friction for both of you. Right. I, mean, right. I have to provide guidance in you know, molding in a different way, but not in his, his essence. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I got, I mean, right and wrong is right and wrong, and there's consequences. <laughs> so, right. Exactly. Right. 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 So, right. So there's some molding in. You know, if you that choose to right. go that way, then right. you'll be molded that way. Exactly. <laughs> but, but outside of that, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, going off your point, like, I feel like when I am in, like, difficult situations, um, like, acknowledging, like, okay, this is how I'm feeling right now, like, it's not the best feeling, but I'm going to, like, sit in this for, like, a few minutes, like, like acknowledge how bad the situation is, and then, like, move on. Like, right. But like, I used to just ignore it. I'd be like, everything's fine. Like, that just didn't happen. And like, that was not the best way to deal with it. So now I just like, 
yeah, like I said, like I just acknowledge it. I'm like, all right, that just happened. Like I was cheated, you know, whatever it is. And then give yourself a moment to just acknowledge the feeling. Does that make sense? It absolutely makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because you do have to acknowledge it by um, trying to just suppress it. It's going to come up later right. on. So you do need to acknowledge it, but not stay in it in the way right. that you did. You allow yourself the time frame to deal with it right. and to stay in that moment, and then you move on. Right. The thing about stress is it, it's a cumulative type thing. So we carry it with us. So you don't want to hold on to that and then carry it, and it just continues to accumulate in your body. So I think that that's a wonderful stress management technique that you should continue to implement in your life. Um, we're going to talk about um, some other issues regarding stress and how stress impacts you on a physiological level. And then moving into nutrition and how that's important. Um, the thing about stress, and we'll talk about it as we move into these slides, being in a state of, so there's acute stress and then there's chronic stress. So we all deal with acute stress, you know, um, someone gets you upset, you're driving, somebody cuts you off, and you respond, right? But you don't stay in that stress state. If you stay in the st that stress state in terms of being in a chronic stress, stress state, you're going to start depleting your body of certain um, vitamins and minerals. So you can actually create deficiencies within your body. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind. There's a term that people use that stress can kill you. And that's a really, really valid point. And I can tell you, like from my own personal journey with stress, you know, nutritionally wise and health wise, I feel like I do pretty good. You know, I eat well, I exercise, I do the mind, body, and spirit. Thing for the most part. There, but there was a time in my life, a couple of years ago, where I was under tremendous amount of stress. And so as a result of that, I experienced what's called um, irritable bowel disease, right? Mm -hmm. So it was really where I just had allow, allowed uh, myself to be in a holding pattern with the stress where it became so chronic that it impacted my health. So I'm here to tell you personally that stress can kill you and it can actually impact your health on a, you know, there's good stress, but then if you stay in that chronic stress state, it can have a negative impact on your health overall. So then we're going to move into why it's important to have healthy food choices. And then we're going to have uh, questions and answers. I like this particular slide. I just want to see does it resonate with any of you? The reason why I like this slide because as a mother, as um, someone who has a mortgage, has a car note, um, has a job, um, sometimes I feel like things are coming undone. And when I saw this particular image, it really spoke to me because that's what stress can do to you. I mean, if you have children, have parents, you know, who are putting pressure on you for whatever reason, sometimes you can feel like you're literally coming undone. And so I like the a visual image that this conveys. But um, physical stress, their physical stress and their emotional stressors, right? Some of the physical stress that you experience, does anybody experience headaches when you get stressed? Okay. You get the tight neck, tight shoulders, yeah, yeah. when you're stressed? Okay. What about insomnia? Yeah. Or the, yeah, right, okay. Difficulty concentrating. Teeth grinding at night. Okay. But those are some of the physical indicators of stress. Uh, when you're dealing with emotional stress, however, um, anybody experience becoming easily agitated when you're, when you're stressed out? Yes. Okay, I see some head nods. <laughs> having difficulty relaxing and just having chronic thought, well, continuous thoughts going through your mind all the time where you just cannot bring it down. That's when you're dealing with emotional stress. And then you're feeling overloaded, overwhelmed. I just don't know if I can take another moment of this. 
you know, that type of feeling. That's emotional stress. Okay. So the different things that we have to um, look at, like I said, is that stress can impact the foods that we eat. And then the foods that we eat can impact stress. When we're stressed out, usually um, 35 to 60% of the people who are stressed out, when they're stressed, they typically overeat. Okay? And then what they overeat on are generally high sugar, high fat, processed foods. Okay? So sometimes people, when they get stressed for the, uh, especially, especially if it's like a short term thing, sometimes you lose your appetite. But sometimes when you stay in a chronic state, the appetite comes on. And so you reach for the thing that, um, what we call comfort foods, which can cause discomfort in the body <laughs> later on, right? So I just have a few items that I want, I brought, and I just wanted to hold up those items and, and just for you to respond, raise your hand, if you tend to turn to these types of foods when you're stressed. And now, this is just a sample, you know, it might not be, this is pizza, okay? This is Wegmans, but it could be any kind of right, pizza, right? right? Mm -hmm. Anybody respond, eat that when you're stressed, okay? Um, <laughs> what about chips? <laughs> Keep your hands up forever. <laughs> what about chips? Salt and vinegar. And I didn't say salt and vinegar. This is just a representation of chips. I mean, this is what I just grabbed something from you know, the store to show you. Okay. What about um, candy bars? Okay. All right. Coffee. Okay. For, for stress, coffee? I just drink coffee in the morning, that's all. Now, I only drink like one cup. Okay. But not when you're stressed? No, not necessarily. Okay. All right. So, what about this? Or just representative any fruit? <laughs> when you're stressed? Nobody? <laughs> not one person? Okay. So, you kind of valid. You kind of validated my point, right? That when you're stressed, what is what is it that you eat? Some of you tell me exactly what is it that you eat when you're stressed. Ice cream. Ice cream. Okay. Ice cream yesterday. <laughs> okay. So sugary, sugary, high fat foods, right? Which is what we're talking about. Sugary, high fat foods. I don't eat a lot of junk. I just eat too much food, like whatever I have. So what if I it? cook at home, I probably would just eat too much of it. Even if when I'm, I know I, sh I should stop because I'm full, I'll just keep eating. Like if it's, it's just food. What type of, just give me an example of what type of food. Um, chicken and rice, just anything. Okay. <laughs> you know? Okay. So more. Even if it's healthy food, it's just, I just, it's, I think it's a different problem. Okay. <laughs> well, well and I guess that's really, you know, is it because it's there that you're eating the food? Or is it that is stress triggering you to eat even when you're not hungry? That's what you want to think about, right? right? So it's like, what are what are the triggers? Look for triggers that um, something's you know when I'm big, some people when they're busy they just need to nibble, you know, as they go along. Sometimes some people at a certain time of night when your energy starts to wane. You start to eat because you really what you need to do is go to sleep. <laughs> but your body's trying to find a source of energy to keep you going. Mm -hmm. So we tend to get we tend to snack sometimes at night. Yes. I just think it's funny because I tend to undereat when I'm stressed because I can give myself I don't have time to eat and then I have to like, do all these different things. But like yeah, I feel a lot of people just like when I'm Some people do that, you know, like I said, the, the percentage of people that do that is usually lower than the people that overeat when they're stressed, right? So the um, the next slide we're going to talk about is my idea of a, a, the stress paradigm. And stress comes at us from so many different angles. So we have environmental stress that we have to consider. And so environmental stress, I like to think of your job. 
you know, that impacts, um, that's one of the environments that you tend to function in, right? Um, the environment at large, in terms of there being so many toxins in the environment, and those toxins impact us uh, in terms of our health. And then acculturated stress is the stress that we take on because we sometimes take on other people's value system. Mm -hmm. So what it is, whatever it is that they value, we tend to want to have those things, even though it might not be part of our value system, right? Just say for exa example, culturally, there are some cultures that are very driven by individualism. And then there's some cultures that are driven by communalism. <coughs> and so if we're coming from a communal culture, but now we're taking on the value of an individualized driven culture, we're kind of working against ourselves. And so that's, that creates a level of stress, usually on more of an emotional, psychological level. And it's sometimes we're not even aware that that's what we're trying to do. And they, there's a saying, <coughs> I don't know if you all are familiar with it for a second. Um, there's a saying, keeping up with the Joneses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when people have, an, or they, their perception of their lives is that they're living a particular way and we want to um, create that same life for ourselves, even though we don't know underneath what's really going on, that's another example of, of acculturated stress. Yes? This, uh, this is then more like are supposed to that you put on yourself, like I'm supposed to be married at 30, that type of thing. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to have a million dollars at this point in my life. Right. You know, so that's, that's really. That's more where I'm at. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Past the so, 30. Right. So it's more of you taking on, as opposed to looking at your life and saying, my life is rich in the way that it is. And what I have is way more valuable than any dollar can buy, you know, but that's, that's an example of it. And then we have the family stress, you know, the family behaves this way, so you should behave that way. You know, we all eat this kind of food, so why are you trying to break away and eat something <laughs> different, right? Or we all get together, you know, at this time of the year, why aren't you here, even though if you have a valid reason for not being there. So that also generates a level of stress. And then just individual stress. Um, holding on to, you know, being like in a stuck, in a holding pattern. You need to make a decision about something and you can't make a decision. You won't, you choose not to make a decision. And that puts you in a state of stress because you just can't stay in a holding pattern. Either you find a solution or you let it go. But sometimes we tend to want to just hold on indefinitely and not make a, a solution, um, come up with a solution or make a move about something that's important in our lives. And so that creates a level of stress. This slide is what's called the stress response system, and this is just the physiological impact that stress have, has on the body. So there's a process in the body called the HPA axis, and it has three components. It has the hypothalamus, um, it has the pituitary gland, and then it has the endocrine system, with, uh, I mean the endocrine glands, which are not the endocrine glands, the adrenal glands, which are a part of the system. Does anyone know where the adrenal glands are located on the body? Okay, can you show me on your on your body? Can you show us? Uh, I pulled out like right in here somewhere, I guess. Okay. Oh, back here. Mm -hmm. Does it see the way your kidneys are and the way your adrenals are, right? That's your stress oh, part of your stress that. response system, mm -hmm. right? So what happens is that the hypothalamus is in the brain. And the pituitary sits in the brain as well. So when you're stressed, you ignite the system, right? So the pituitary, uh, the hypothalamus sends a message to the pituitary, and then the pituitary sends a message to the adrenals to release a hormone, hormone called cortisol. Are you familiar with that? Okay. So and it's all, it also releases uh, adrenaline. So those are like our fight and flight. You know, when we're in the middle of fight and flight syndrome, you all familiar with that? And we, our bodies are conditioned to be in a fight and flight syndrome or a response. When something's chasing us, like a, a tiger's chasing you, your body's, you know, because you need to get, 
the energy to run. Yeah. So what happens is that the blood goes to the legs, all of your energy goes to the extremities so that you can get out of there, right? But what happens is that, so the cortisol level is elevated so you can get moving. But what happens is that we are constantly in that state of running. So even when somebody says something to piss you off, I'm like, ah. so you're running, right? You're ready to run. You're telling your body, ignite the system. Somebody's pulling, you know, like I said, cut you off in a car and you're upset. Or, you know, someone says something that sounds inappropriate to you and you get upset or you got so much work to do and you, you just, you think of the just thought of doing all that work, you start to ignite this system. Well, as, when it stays on for too long, it becomes problematic because your body isn't designed to handle stress in that way. It's designed to have that burst of cortisol and then you run and then it calms back down. You come back down and then you move on. Yes? Um, is this the same in children? Yes, but children children tend to, uh, you know, not get stressed as quickly as we do, and they, they don't they manage it differently. They don't hold on to it. You know, they sort of they don't they're not conditioned yet to hold on to the memory of that stress. Now, something can happen because stress is cumulative. If you're on a bicycle when you're a child and you run into a mailbox and it's very traumatic. You're going to play that in your tissue. That memory is kind of stuck in your tissues in terms of the stress, right? Or say, for instance, if you were molested as a child, that memory and that stress, that accumulative effect stays in your body until you find a way to release it. So yes, but adults typically are in that fight and flight state much more than children are. So the example you're using, what's the technique to release? Like someone said, like the same example, um, a coworker says, I don't swim. And I said, really, we all swim. We just don't know we can swim. Mm -hmm. and so she says, no, I almost drowned. When I was four, my father had to pull me up, so I've never swam. I don't swim. So, you know, my thing to her is, how do you get past that? And to me, I say, but you can't swim. If you tell your mind you can't swim, then you can't swim. But if you tell your mind, I can't swim, right. and you do the technique and the work to get there, you can swim. Right. And so how do you suggest you get from that? Well, I like that technique and what, what you're saying, too, in terms of telling your mind that you can. It's like affirming, right? So you're, you're creating a positive affirmation around it. So you're uh, rewiring the mind, if you will. So that's definitely one way, is the positive affirmations, to be able to say, um, I can do this thing. I am powerful. I am strong. So you're telling, you're conditioning your body to respond in a different way. For that particular person, and just the scenario would be, another technique might be to look at possible hypnotherapy. Because on some level, what it does is it takes you back to that state that you were in that created that fear to help you to release it. So you kind of need to go back to that moment to uh, put yourself in that space, in that same state, to be able to deal with it. So hypnotherapy, there's so many different techniques. Hypnotherapy is one of those. Um, there's a technique called tapping. Um, oh, and, my girlfriend. Are you this she's morning, morning. She just told me about that. Yeah, this so tapping is very powerful. And for those of you who don't know about tapping, so from an Eastern, Eastern medicine and Eastern cultural perspective, our bodies are made up of energy fields. Right? So if you ever heard of meridians, so there are lines, energy lines that run up and down our body and they innervate or um, activate the organs in our body. So the idea is that there are certain points that if you tap, they, you, they run along a certain energy field. And if you tap it and you tap a particular pattern and you say words and it's like you're, the affirmations that I'm talking about that we mentioned earlier, you're tapping and you're saying the words in, in a certain way and you're starting to release that pattern from your body. And if you want to, you can actually you know, just Google or go online to YouTube and do tapping. Emotional freedom technique is what it's called, emotional freedom technique. And it works for on an emotional level 
and it also works if you're having physical pain in your body, um, chronic pain that you can't get rid of, it's good for that. And what you do is you're starting on a scale of 0 to 10, and you're measuring before you tap, okay, just self-check-in. I'm at an 8. My pain level is at an 8, or my emotional level stress is at an 8 before you start tapping. And then you tap, you do it like about five times, inhale, exhale, and then you say, okay, on a scale of zero to 10, where am I now? And you should be moving down. You should be moving down to five, four, three, two, one. That's the point. But you do it on a consistent basis to get that result. So it's called emotional freedom technique. Now, the purpose of this slide is, um, I talked about cortisol, right? And cortisol is like, a, it's the stress hormone in your body. It's one of them, along with um, adrenaline or epinephrine. Um, cortisol is important in the body. We need it. So even though the, it's, a, it's a point of balance, that's what we should always look for in our lives is balance. So when cortisol is balanced, it does, it's wonderful. It actually helps uh, fight off, keep your body balanced in terms of inflammation. So it acts as an anti-inflammatory, right? It helps with metabolism and things of that nature. That's when cortisol is in balance. Now, when cortisol is out of balance, because again, we back, we're caught up now in a chronic stress cycle, and we're not turning the stress off. The stress continuously goes on and on and on. What happens is start, our bodies produce large amounts of cortisol, and it's like with a muscle, right? For those of you who work out, when you work that muscle, work it, work it, and say for instance, if you do 25 pounds, 10 reps, what happens eventually if you do 10, uh, 25 pounds of 10 reps and then you go 25 pounds, 20 reps, and then 25 pounds, 30 reps. What happens to the muscle? It gets fatigued, right? So that's what happens with, I mentioned the adrenals. You, you stay, when you stay stressed, that the adrenals get fatigued. And so initially they produce a lot of cortisol, which can create imbalances in the body. But then when they get fatigued and they get what they, which you might have heard a term called adrenal exhaustion, exhausted, they don't produce enough cortisol. So what happens is that leaves you very vulnerable when you don't have enough cortisol in your body. Because when you're stressed, now if you don't have enough cortisol to keep the inflammation in check, then you're gonna have an inflammatory, you can have an inflammatory um, a process going on unchecked in your body. And what inflammation is just like having heat in your body all the time. So inflammation, when I talk about inflammation, I'm talking about, you know, conditions like arthritis, um, again, you know, irritable bowel, um, things of that nature. Uh, when you have uh, upper respiratory problems and, and things of that nature, you're talking about inflammation. So when inflammation goes unchecked, it starts to burn and damage your other tissues in your body. And also what's going on at the same time is when there's so much stress going on, your immune system is being suppressed. So if you are around somebody that's sick with um, bacteria infection or things like that, you're more prone to get that bacteria infection. So that's why it's important to um, keep yourself, keep the stress in balance, right? And again, this is just another image, kind of a blurry image of the, um, the whole stress cycle. And all I'm saying is that when you're stressed, it stimulates the adrenal glands to produce the cortisol over time. Too much, too much when the adrenal glands are being worked, overworked, they're going to start producing low amounts of cortisol, which then is going to just keep you in a stress cycle. And finally, we're talking about foods that stress the adrenals. So, I don't know, do these foods look, uh, are any of you consuming any of these foods up here, I should say? So, white sugar really does a job on the adrenals. They overstimulate the adrenals and cause the adrenals to produce lots of cortisol. So, just imagine, if you're already stressed from work, or you're already stressed from 
some family drama or crisis, and then you're putting these foods on top of that, it's just escalating the situation, right? So the white sugar, and then people say, well, what about, um, what if I use like an artificial sweet? You know, wouldn't that be better? No, it wouldn't, because what it does is it also impacts the, court, um, the adrenals, and in addition to that, the artificial uh, sweetener uh, impact the liver. So you have a double whammy on that. You have the, the white sugar, then you have the artificial sh sugar that's having a negative impact on your body. And then you have it. Oh, no, I was going to say, and the other thing, I, I probably missed it, but the, the other thing is the, a lot of the artificial sweeteners, the splendors and so forth, um, aspartames, they're, they're known to have carcinogens in them, you know. Well, and I mentioned that the, the so that's where they, that's how they impact the liver, because li the liver is like your detoxification organ for everything that goes into the body. And so as far as aspartame, what some research has shown is that it actually, when it gets broken down in, into your body, it actually creates a form of formaldehyde. Wow. Right? So imagine that. A formaldehyde is what they use to embalm dead lives. Mm -hmm. All right? So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's serious, but you know, the, 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 yes. So what would you use to sweeten your coffee? How about stevia? Stevia would be a, a better choice, because it's an herb. Stevia, stevia. And it's 25 times sweeter than sugar. So how do you spell that? S-T-E-V-I-A. S-T-E-V-I-A. Okay. Yeah. Stevia. Well, well, and you can't just drink it without it, right? Brown sugar is brown sugar. Brown sugar is just white sugar so that sugar. has molasses in it. But, it, but it, it's a so that's what that's makes it brown. And where would you find it? In the raw sugar, you know, the thing is, sugar, it sugar processes the same in your body. Whether it's a, agave, maple syrup, all of those things. They still elevate your cortisol level. Corn syrup. Corn, oh, and <laughs> high fructose corn syrup. Oh my God! You talk about impacting the liver, and and, um, and what it happens is it that it, it sets your body up for possible insulin resistance. And so you know, in our communities, diabetes is very prevalent. Diabetes, heart, high blood pressure, um, coronary heart disease. Those are very serious diseases in our community, and those are some of the most well-known diseases that can be um, dealt with with food and exercise, wow. changing your diet. And so you, before we even get there, these are some of the things to think about that you can start to uh, cut out or eliminate or minimize in your diet, right? And so even with the processed foods, with them, they're so um, nutrient deficient, usually, and they have, they're full of the sugars, they're full of the fats, that's what makes them so tasty, right? <laughs> okay. So those things also have an impact, not only on your blood glucose levels, but on your um, cortisol levels, right? And then alcohol, again, that's also a stimulant to your adrenals. And the caffeine, whether it's in the form of uh, coffee, a soda, mm -hmm. uh, candy, you know, chocolate, chocolate, what have you, it still overstimulates the adrenals. So that's what we're looking at here. And so the adrenals are so important because they, adrenals and the cortisol level in particular, they're so important because high uh, cortisol levels has, is linked to hypertension. Again, very prevalent in our community. So we have to look at what is the connection to all of these things. It's not just the stress is, is critical to this. The stress impacts those disease dates, but also now we're putting all this on top of that. <laughs> so we're increasing our risk. We're increasing our risk for diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease, right? So let's look at some of the good things that we want to think about in terms of foods that support the adrenals. So we have our berries here, and um, they are filled with many vitamins and nutrients, right? And we have our avocado, which has over 20 essential nutrients. And it also has folate 
and it has the B vitamins, and all that is good for your adrenals, right? Mm -hmm. You have your green leafy vegetables, and people always talk about, well, I gotta get my calcium from milk. That's what we've been conditioned to believe, right? Green leafy vegetables provide a wonderful source of calcium, right? So we can use that um, to help with our stress. And just eating whole foods, fruits, vegetables, and things like that are all very calming to the body. So when you're in a stress state, you know, although we go towards those high sugary fat foods, it's actually the fruits and the veggies that provide more of a calming effect on the body overall. And then you have the nuts, and nuts have a good source of magnesium, manganese, um, you can even get zinc um, from your nuts. Those are things, those are nutrients that are very supportive to the adrenals as well. And then with the salmon, you have your omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids, you're talking brain health, you're talking adrenal health, um, and you're talking anti-inflammatory, so all of these foods are good for that. And then the citrus fruits are important because the adrenal gland stores, it's one of the um, uh, areas of your body where vitamin C, it has the most amount of stored vitamin C in your adrenals. So when you're stressed, you're burning up that vitamin C. So you want to replenish that by eating citrus fruits if, you're, if you tolerate that, because not everybody can tolerate all of these things, right? So I wanted to just give you a quick picture of things to think about. Again, the salmon with the omega-3 fatty acids, um, uh, your good source of protein, your nuts are a good source of protein. You can even get pro you know, protein is in all of our foods. It's just the amount of protein. Now, yes. are some nuts better than others? Well, it just depends on, um, you know, what you want to eat the nut for. Say, for instance, if you might have a thyroid issue, right? and you want to have more selenium, selenium mm -hmm. in your diet. So then you would go to Brazil nuts because they have more of that in there. Right. But in general, you're gonna get that in all the nuts, but they have a higher concentration. So that's what I mean, it, it depends on, but if you're just talking about I'm eating. just like eating yeah. nuts, but I don't know what's, you know. Like so so people use. usually nuts. think peanut is a nut and it's really not and yeah. sometimes people have allergies right. to, to the peanuts. peanuts. So I would say that's one to, you know, you want to stay away from it, mm -hmm. especially if it's grown mm -hmm. here in the United States because it's very heavily sprayed and sometimes it's the toxins in the, the, in, in the um, nuts that are making us sick too. Okay. So, but if you're talking about the um, almonds, cashews, now the thing about nuts is sometimes they do have what's called an enzyme inhibitor which means that they're very difficult, sometimes difficult for us to break down. Okay. The idea is to soak your nuts. Most people don't like to do that because it changes the texture of the nuts, but to soak the nuts for eight hours. What I generally do, because for me, you know, I have to, um, I have to, you know, be a little bit careful with what, how I digest things. So I do soak the nuts, but I have a food dehydrator. So I put the nuts in the dehydrator to take, mm -hmm. pull the water back out once mm -hmm. I've, release the enzyme inhibitor, right? Okay. Uh -huh. And then nut butters, are you all familiar with the nut butters? Yeah. So let's like nut oh, butters, yeah. what they've taken, you can take almonds and blend them down or yeah. you can buy them in the store and they're like, instead of peanut butter, you can put nut butters on your I've seen some Yeah, and, too. Exactly. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And those are definitely a good source of magnesium as well. Um, what I was showing here on this um, slide is that the University of Maryland, these are the options that are I saw online that were available to you. Exactly. You, right? Exactly. So how do we deal with that, right? How do we deal? Because you got Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. You got salads. They have salads. They do have salads. They have, they have grilled. So good. They Very have grilled chicken. chicken. Right. Very good. Okay. Um, Subway. Same thing. Okay. Salad, salad turkey, salad, all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, Sabaro. No Can anybody help me with that? They have salads. <laughs> do they? Yeah. yeah. I think they I have salads. I only salad. saw it was on their website. I only saw it was pasta salad. But you don't go no, there. They actually have grilled salad. I work for dining. Okay, very good. Oh, I put you on the spot. That's all right. I don't know. Like, this one right here. <laughs> roasted vegetables, they have roasted vegetables. Yeah, they have the roasted vegetables. That's just an ice cream. And that's ice cream. Oh, that's ice cream. That's, that's ice cream. Oh, so we definitely know we want 
thing. Oh, uh, once in a while. Oh, All things oh, in moderation. Right, you're right. You're right. It's a, it's a delicate balance, right? Because right? right. you know we go moderate and then we go. Yeah, then we start. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Good question. Let's say, Sabaros, you go and you do want a slice of pizza. I'm assuming the thinner the better. And with veggies, like, how do you eat pizza? I like, I like your thinking, because that's what the, the next slide is going to show. Right? Um, is that one? Yeah. So, you're right. So, good, better, better. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, she said something about how you want pizza. Like, as far as the bread, my concern would be with the bread being um, processed. You know, genetically modified and stuff like that. So I did learn one way to make pizza crust out of cauliflower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is yeah. 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 like cauliflower. Cauliflower. You can make it out of chickpea flour. You can make it out of almond flour. Uh, I, I, I kind of like grated the cauliflower, mm -hmm. and mixed it up with egg and cheese. That was the base. Wow. Oh, that spread it on the that uh the that parchment paper or something? Mm -hmm. Parchment paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And put it in the oven. And mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so many creative ways. I'm telling you. It really is. I mean, even so, at one point I was doing like um, a raw food diet. So I did that for about six months. And you can make a pizza out of just nuts. I mean, you know what I mean? Raw food, it was a raw pizza. Uh, or buckwheat grout. You know, it's just different ways that you know how to uh, blend things together. And just put that tomato sauce on there. And it's a, again, just take to, uh, sun dried tomatoes and uh, to, uh, regular, you know, uh, non dehydrated tomatoes and made it into a sauce with some olive oil, salt, and things like that. Put it on it, and that's, that was the pea. And I put uh, basil and all that. Mm -hmm. But I, I like your question about, that's what we have to th start thinking about. Okay, so if I'm going to eat there, even if you go to McDonald's, quote, unquote, there are ways to eat healthier. Every, you might get caught out there, you know, and say, okay, I'm here. What can, how can I make the best choice within the context of where I am, right? So what I want us to do is just look at this from the perspective of good, better, best. Right? Because what I don't want pe anyone to do is, you know, there's, to me, there's no gain in walking away feeling guilty <laughs> about what it is that you do. What it's about is really being self reflective and saying, okay, what moves can I make to, uh, to move in a healthy, what things can I do to move in a healthier direction? Even if it's one thing, what I'd like for you all to commit before you leave, one thing that you can do differently to A, decrease your stress and B, to eat healthier. Just one thing. And if that's incorporating more fruits and vegetables into your diet or incorporating one new fruit into your diet for the next seven days, right? So anyway, with this, what I wanted to show you was, um, in, co in column A, if you go down and you look at what, we look at one, two, three, right? So we look at each row. Mm -hmm. What do you think would be in the first one? Let me tell you because you might not be able to tell. Yeah. It's noodles, right? It's, pop, it's it's like an Asian noodle dish, right? Okay. And then the second one is a smoothie, green smoothie, and the third one is avocado toast with avocado on it. So out of these, the uh, column A, which one, one, two, three, do you think would be the best choice? Probably three. Three. Three? That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say two. I'm going to go with the green smoothie. I would go with the green smoothie. In the sense that you can make that smoothie so nutrient dense, right? You can put your, not only do you have your veggies in there, your green veggies, you have fruit. Yeah. And then you can have, you can put in chia seeds to get your omega-3 fatty acids, right? You can put in hemp seeds if you want to improve the quality of your your protein. You know, one tablespoon, one or two tablespoons of hemp seeds will give you 10 grams of protein. So that smoothie, you can, I mean, you can start mm. your day with a power punch, mm. right, with that smoothie. I would say number And three, it's easier to digest. It's you much easier because it quote unquote pre-digests it with the blender, right? So. It's easier to digest. That's so true. 
I mean, it's a win-win. It goes right into your bloodstream. You got all these nutrients in there, and it keeps you. And if you, you want to make it where it's, um, you can put, you can even put coconut oil in there. You know, just to give it a nice little flavor, and also to keep you um, satiated so that you don't get hungry as quickly. So there are different ways to do it. Um, number three, I would say, would probably be the second choice because, again, like I mentioned, avocado has so many essential minerals in there that uh, is helpful to our body. The bread, I might ditch it, or you know what? We could have used. You could make this out of almond bread. Mm -hmm. I use. Um, I make almond bread sometimes. What almond bread, sprout, sprouted bread. That's like the um, Ezekiel. Yeah. Ezekiel is a better choice. Yes, that's true. Um, but for anybody that has gluten tolerance is gluten intolerant, mm -hmm. then Ezekiel wouldn't work, right? So if you have any uh, problems with gluten, digesting gluten, then that wouldn't work for you. But almond flour would, okay? And then number uh, four to column B, uh, the first thing that we have up here is we have like a taco salad with beans and we have a little bit of cheese and some tortilla chip, chips sprinkled around that. Number two, we have a pizza with a salad, and number three, we have uh, pancakes. So, what would be the, the best choice you think? Taco salad. Taco salad. Yeah. Well, the second was a pizza. Pizza with a salad. Right. Okay, you got that right. So, the pizza with the salad. That's what she was asking about earlier, right? What if you have the pizza with the salad? So. You know, not to be so hard on yourself, it's like, okay, you have that pizza, mm -hmm. but guess what? You can balance it out with some more nutrient-dense foods, like a salad, right? So that, that's a commitment that you can make to yourself. If I'm, if I'm going to have this pizza, I'm going to have a salad to go with it, or I'm going to have a side dish of vegetables to go with oh, it, yeah. to balance it out, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to allow myself to have that moment of, you know, if you want to call it <laughs> splurging, comfort food, what have you. We're, look, we're looking at good, better, best. So having the pizza by itself might not appear to be the best, but then having it with a nice big salad is better, mm -hmm. right? So the third thing we have, the column C, we have salmon over a bed of vegetables. We have a taco with um, beef, lettuce, and cheese. And then at the bottom we have um, some oatmeal, a bowl of oatmeal with with blueberries. That's so what is my choice? That's like five. five. <laughs> I like one the salmon. One and three. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think that's I think that's some pretty good. I like the salmon. Okay. And and you get your omega three fatty acids, but may I ask you to do the wild salmon? Yes, wild that's okay. the only kind I like. I'll wild salmon. salmon. The farm, the farm wild raised salmon. salmon you know, they like actually feed pork. the salmon the antibi uh, antibiotics and things of that nature. And so when you eat that, you're getting the antibiotics, and we don't need that. We don't need those synthetic drugs in our body. Um, and, and one thing to to note is, as a lot of people don't know this, but because um, it's very it's very much under the radar, but the canned salmon, the sockeye salmon. Is, is is not is never farm rate. It's like sockeye salmon. The can, canned salmon is yeah. is wild. It's not yeah. So just even something simple like that, like the canned salmon, right. it's not farm raised. That's the kind Ooh. of salmon like, yeah, I eat. Yeah, sockeye, sockeye, sockeye salmon. I eat sockeye. So that's yeah. what you want. You always no, want to go like even with any of your fish for the most part. You want to go with wild because when you go with the farm raised, and the thing is, they get because they're giving them antibiotics because they're in conditions that create a better create uh, bacteria and disease states. And so they're just trying to get them to be healthy enough so that they can last long enough for you to eat them. Right? Don't they change the skin color to make it? The, the salmon, they actually die. And I don't the, like The that. farm raised, and this is from mm -hmm. me talking to some of the people who work in the grocery store in the meat section. Mm -hmm. They actually dye the salmon bright red so that It'll make it more appealing to you. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, know. That's why I get wild pork. I get wild pork. Right. How about wild caught shrimp, too? Yeah. Wild caught shrimp. Right. Well, with the same thing with like the Gatorade and stuff, like flame retardant, just to keep the color fiber. 
Well, I know with the, the red meats, they usually put uh, nitrates in nit well, nitrites or nitrates, which are carcinogenics, mm -hmm. to make it red and keep it, it keep its color longer and to stay preserved longer so you can it won't spoil before you buy it. Yeah. So one day we'll have the I have to come and talk about the politics of food because there's so much involved in the way our food is grown, the way our food is processed, and the way the food is sold to you in the store. Wow. Well, and the thing is, the thing is, and now is a good time to think about how do you become a little bit more self-sustainable. So community gardens are so important uh, because if you live in the DMV area, we're living in a food desert zone. A lot of us are living in what's called food desert. So the quality of food that's coming into our communities is very different from the quality of food that are going into other communities, but right? part of it, too, is that it's expensive. I mean, moms and whole foods are yeah. not cheap. Yeah. They're not. No, They're not. But is expensive. the thing about it, think about this. Okay, this is how I like to present it. You pay now or you pay later. Right? Report. So that one, one way you can look at it. And another thing is, everything doesn't have to be organic. Right. So you find out the dirty dozen, you know, Google the dirty dozen, you know, your grapes, things like that, that are highly sprayed coming from Mexico and other places, you want to get those organic. You know, your tomatoes, you want to get those organic. Hmm. You know, your oranges, because they're colored, I mean, they're covered. Not so much. And, and avocados so too, don't, they don't have to be because of the thick skin. Right. Avocado. Exactly. Anything that's covered in a thick skin like that, not so much. You know? But some things you definitely... So tomatoes organic. Tomatoes you want to do organic. Mm. Grapes you want to do organic. Apples you want to do organic. You know? So things like that, you, some things you don't want to skim on. So you don't, don't feel that you have to go to moms and those things. Because even Safeway and Giant, they have organic. Aldi's now yeah. has organic. So you just be thrifty and think about how you can do your shopping in a different way without always having to look like, okay, I go to Whole Foods. I got to go to, you know, Wagons. I got to go to moms, you know. Now, if I'm just buying fruits and vegetables, ignoring organic, but I'm not eating Big Macs and French fries. I'm still better off. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And even going to the farmer's market, right? So, again, supporting local. Going to the farmer's market. Because some of the farmers can't afford to be um, organic certified. FD, uh, I think it's FDA organic certified, right? They can't afford that. So they have, they and, they and you talk to the farmers and they'll tell you, if I use something, this is what I use, and I use it in very, very small amounts. And certain times before the plant actually blossoms to a certain level and starts to uh, create f bare fruit. So even that's a much better choice. And what I find is that the food lasts so much longer because it's not coming from California or Mexico, right? You can get an apple from the farmer's market that will last you for weeks versus an apple that you get from New Zealand, you know, that might last a few days. So you have to think about that too. And, and then it's not as nutrient dense, even though it might say organic. So you have to learn to balance that. So what I wanted to just leave you all with today was um, an idea of some things that you can use for a basic health, healthy stress management plan. So, you know, just keep these tips in mind. If you try to eat whole foods as much as possible, you know, again, we're talking about if you find yourself somewhere you want to have a pizza, bring a whole food in, into your um, into the picture. Eat a salad with it. Eat a nice side uh, uh, a side of vegetables with it. Consuming your vegetables, you want to consume at least the fruits and vegetables five to ten servings per day because it's filled with so many nutrients, you don't necessarily have to go buy all these supplements, right? Because if you're eating the food, the proper foods, you're getting your nutrients from the food you're eating, right? Which is in a much better form. Um, you want to eat your green leafy vegetables of different types. Uh, you want to have your kales, your collards, your spinach, your kalaloo, all those different types of green leafy vegetables. And if possible, you um, consume the, the green smoothie once a day if you have a blender. Because what it is, like I said, you can get so much nutrients. You can start your day off with such a strong um, combination of nutrients in a smoothie. Right. 
And then you want to minimize the processed food. I mean, I know we humans, we've been conditioned, we've been living a way, living a certain way for so long. We're going to sometimes eat processed foods. It's not that you should never do that, but try to minimize the processed foods. That you eat. And then in terms of exercise, um, the young ladies here, y'all, please join them uh, with their on their exercise. Um, the days that they exercise, but try to get in at least three to four times uh, uh, a, a week of exercise. And from a CDC, uh, the Center of a Disease Control perspective, in order to minimize um, and reduce your risk of diabetes and high blood pressure, they recommend exercising at least 150, a minimum of 150 minutes a week. So if you break that down, 50 minutes, three days a week. Right? But that's to reduce your risk. And if you're already in that state where you have diabetes or hypertension, it helps to um, uh, manage it so that it doesn't get worse. And so that possibly if you're on medication, you can actually come off med medication doing those things. Of course, you got to combine your diet with exercise as well. And then spend some time in nature. Sometimes um, just getting outside, you have all those negative ions in the air, and that that actually helps to release some of the stress as well. And you can incorporate yoga and qigong into your life. You know, try to do that at least a few times a week. Uh, within the Eastern culture, you know, qigong is just a part of their life. So you will see, uh, can see images of uh, elderly people out in the park every day doing qigong. And I mean, that just keeps the body so strong. And even for young people, you know, we think, we are um, used to that yang type exercise, get in and get it. Well, over time, you know what, that can impact your adrenals too. So you have to balance that, that yang with the yin or yang by doing yoga and qigong to create a better balance. And then incorporating some type of meditation into your life. Five, 10 minutes of meditation in the morning uh, can help to set your tone for the day. And then deep abdominal breathing, um, that can help you. Just any, any of you have problems sleeping at night or falling asleep? Yeah. So a deep abdominal breathing can actually help you go into a deeper state of sleep. And just before we go, I just want to do, just take you through a deep abdominal breathing exercise. So place your, um, women place your right hand, your left hand over your right, men left hand over the right. And so with the deep abdominal breathing, which you are to visualize your abdomen expanding out like a balloon. So you're inhaling through the nostrils, and as you're inhaling, your abdomen is going out, out, out. And as you exhale, imagine you're drawing the abdomen back towards your spinal column. Again, inhale. And exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Does anybody feel the difference? Yeah. Remember, inhale through the nostrils. Exhale through the nostrils, right? And that, doing that, like five minutes before. Exhale through the nostrils. Mm -hmm. okay. Doing that like five, ten minutes before you go to bed is going to take you into a deeper state of sleep. And the thing about breath work is it's portable. You can take it anywhere. So in line with somebody, if you get it, when you're in the line waiting to get to the cashier, somebody says something to upset you or, you know, it's just like you got to wait in a long line and you just get stressed out. You can do your deep abdominal breathing. You know, I do it all the time when I'm, you know, I'm in the car with my daughter. She's chatting me up and I just can't take it another moment. <laughs> then I start doing deep abdominal breathing just to bring myself But you back. still have to do this? No, no. That's okay. just, I wanted you to feel what it should feel like when your abdomen is gotcha. expanding and contracting. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Did you say breathe and ex inhale and exhale through the nose? Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. So anybody have any questions? That's really good. Yeah. I just want to bring something up. Um, you know, the power that we have as consumers. You mentioned, you know, that a lot of these grocery stores have organic stuff. You know, that's because of a demand, you know, for consumers to say we want healthier alternatives. So the more wise and knowledgeable we are, you know, we can take that proactively and, and make these demands. So, for instance, you look at um, 
a noodles and company. Now, a great alternative to, to regular pasta because as she would tell you, pasta, when it gets in your body, it, you know, it converts the starches and sugars, which can you know, spike your, your insulin levels and so forth. Well, a great alternative now, you can go to places like Noodles and Company and they provide vegetable spiral pasta, like Ooh. zucchini pasta. Yeah. So you can have the same exact order that you usually get at Noodles and Company, but just made out of zucchini. Right. Yeah, and, and I recently, you know, um, a few months ago, you know, purchased for the household um, a spiralizer. Right. And, you know, it is, and the kids love it too. You know, you, you put it in and, and the next thing you know, it's making you know, healthy pastas. You mix it with, you know, uh, you know, um, marinara and yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. And I would suggest buying a spiralizer because it's very overly priced at the store. Those those spiralized noodles. Now, if you're busy, and you don't have time to do that. But a spiralizer isn't that expensive. You can actually buy one from Marshalls, a handheld one mm -hmm. for five dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so those those zucchini noodles, you can actually a lot of noodles for one zucchini as opposed to they're selling a package in the store for like seven eight dollars where you can get a zucchini for two dollars and then spiralizing yourself but you're paying for labor yeah you know the labor costs so, thoughts on uh, detox and kind of cleansing your body and starting over so i'm a firm believer of detox i think we should do detox it just depends on where you are and the and, where you are depends on what type of detox you should do. So I don't think that there's one size fit all for everybody. I think that you have to know what state the person's in before they actually begin to recommend what type of detox. But to your point, we can all detox daily, taking water and lemon in the morning. That's a gentle detox for water everybody. And water, and water and lemon juice. That's all you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. You do like a um, half of a lemon and you put it in water and that will actually start a gentle detox throughout the day, right? And as you're drinking, and I should mention, I hope that you all are doing your water. I know that you all are, right? Mm -hmm. At least, you know, at least 64 ounces, but it should be your weight divided by two. Different people do it different ways, right? So as, least, as, long, as long as you're getting your intake of water, that's another gentle way to detox your body, right? So those are some things that you want to think about. Alkalizing your body because, you know, the idea that there's um, your body should be slightly alkaline. In the acid state is when we're more prone to disease. So the way to alkaline your body is your green uh, vegetables and your fruits. And then for those, you know, for those people that might not be able to get it in every day, you can use um, like a fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda with lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, a half of the lemon juice, and about 48 ounces of water, and that creates an alkaline effect in the stomach. So you recommend getting a, a fresh lemon as opposed to buying like the lemon juice? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because usually with the lemon juice, it's been pasteurized, mm -hmm. and when it's pasteurized, a lot of the nutrients um, are, have been destroyed in the pasteurization okay. process. Okay. So I, I like it fresh. Okay. But if you can, you know, again, we're better best, right? Mm -hmm. If that's going to help you to get that in, <laughs> still do it that way, uh -huh. because you're still going to have somewhat of a cleansing effect. Okay. okay. I was just going to say, when I, um, I used to the squirt the, the bottle, mm -hmm. but I get it from um, moms. Mm -hmm. But but then one time I had, you know, went to like Giant or Safeway and bought another lemon bottle, and the taste was totally different. Mm -hmm. it's really? It was. It oh, is. So it was. Yeah. Totally different. It was. Wow. I call it that. Because they probably had to put a preservative in. Yeah. It wasn't. Probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. It wasn't as potent at all. Okay. Yeah. yeah it was, Get the thing for moms. That's a question. Should the yeah. water be warm or cold, or it doesn't matter? Um, so it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, what happens though, I recommend like if you have any level of constipation, like if you're not going to the bathroom on a regular basis, the warm water with the lemon will kick it in in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of that. So. That's one thing you want to make sure too, because that will create a level of stress in your body if you're not going to the bathroom on a regular basis. You know, you need to be, you know, people say different things, but if you're eating three meals a day, 
you should be going at, at least once a day, if not more. At but at least once. Yeah. Any other questions? Do you have um, like a follow you? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I do have cards, but I do have a website, thenurturingway.com. And I have a YouTube channel, thenurturingway.com. Yeah, that's the name of my name. But I can definitely give you a card too. I'll take a card. Okay. <laughs> and before you all go, I just wanted to, um, I know I keep saying it right. I quite like a sample. I wanted to share you, with you all a sample of nut meat. Whoa. So, yeah, it's the whoa, like. Right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I'll just put it in the a little bit because just in case it's like, okay, I just, you know, this is different. But I want to try something different because, again, we were talking about oh, the spiralized noodles and the way to do things. You know, sometimes we have to think out of the box in terms of how you can prepare anything. So these are, this is made from walnut. So if you have a moment to see, you know, come up here, uh, give me a little bit. Just so you can see what it tastes like. I'm very interesting, interesting. You want to come on to try it? You know what, can I email you that? Because I didn't bring my, I didn't bring my coffee. But I will you sure you don't want to try this? Wow. You, you say medication. What kind of nuts is my own? Wow. Yeah, you don't even want to try it. Mm. Oh, no. yeah. Okay, that's good. Well, you can throw it away. You can throw it away. I was so not sure. So, 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 so I made walnut, walnut, sun dried tomatoes, olive oil, parsley. And what I usually do with this is I put it in a taco. I mean, like a, a lettuce yeah. to make it like deep it off. I didn't have time to make the. It, I didn't have time to um to get the lettuce. I drain out. Did you get shots? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You don't do anything, huh? But it's just a different way. <laughs> yeah. You know, why are you allergic? I have one, but I can't do it. I react to it. You react to it? Yeah. Where you are.